a live look at our Bay Area roads. California pumping the brakes on new gas cars. So is our state ready to meet demand? Good evening, I'm Sarah Donchi. And I'm Brian Yamamoto. California is making a bold move by banning new gas-powered cars by the year 2035. So the idea, of course, is to dram dramatically lower emissions and air pollution. Automakers, though, are going to have to increase production of electric cars to meet the demand and find ways to lower prices. Energy experts say the policy could be a game changer. Meanwhile, the city of Richmond paving their own way to a road towards zero emissions. Today, they showcased how hydrogen can play a big role. The city partnering with Chevron, one of the largest businesses in Richmond, who recently built a hydrogen plant. We've got a refinery that's been around here over 100 years. We will look to produce hydrogen from this facility in a low-carbon way with fueling solutions to support customers in the community here. I think the conversation we're going to have today about hydrogen... Chevron is planning to donate 30 Toyota hydrogen-fueled cars to the community. It will also invest in 30 hydrogen refueling stations in California. So we've got a lot of questions. Joining us live now to talk about the state's goal, executive director of the Energy Institute at UC Berkeley, Andrew Campbell. So, Andrew... I know there are some hurdles to accomplishing this. One of them that comes to mind is charging infrastructure. We have about 80,000 charging stations in public in this state. The goal is 250,000. I mean, even people now complain about charging, you know, uh, restrictions or not being able to charge their cars, especially driving long distances, say, from Northern California to Southern California. So can this actually happen? Yeah, so access to electric vehicle charging is going to be a key challenge here. Actually, the, the goal for 2030 is even bigger. It's over 700,000 charging points. And those are just the public charging stations, the ones that people can access in, in shopping centers and, and parking lots, places like that. There's also going to be a need for millions of investments at individual homes in home charging. So it's a big challenge, but I, I think there is time to, to meet that challenge. And also adding more car charging stations put a higher demand on the energy grid, which is already mm -hmm. strained during the heat waves. Could this lead to more blackouts? Can our infrastructure even handle this? Mm -hmm. So there's two ways to look at that. I mean, on the one hand, this is going to happen very gradually. And the amount of demand that's likely to come through this new policy is maybe increasing total demand by 1%, 1.5% a year, something like that. That's very feasible to meet that. that. That's how California was growing through the 90s on the electric grid. The challenge, though, is going to be when people charge their cars. If everyone charges their car in the evenings and at night, which is what happens today with electric vehicle uh, car drivers, that could create some very sp specific challenges, high cost to meet those challenges. It could hurt the environment, too, and potentially uh, threaten reliability if all the charging is happening at the same time. So oil and gas, of course, a huge industry, a powerful industry. They invest a lot in lobbying. Could we see pushback from these companies as states like ours make the shift away from gas cars? Absolutely. This policy is not good for the oil industry. And California is just a drop in the barrel, you could say. But the same policy is being pursued in Europe. Uh, other U.S. states have already announced they're going to follow suit. So this is going to hurt the oil business. It's going to hurt oil companies and also the international oil producers in the Middle East and in Russia. So I expect there will be continued pushback. All right. Well, we'll see how this all plays out. So, Andrew, thank you very much for joining us.